Welcome to Ask Cobb, answering your frequently asked questions on camera. We take you step by step through topics that you want to know about. This is Ask Cobb. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Ask Cobb. I'm Ian, and today we're going to talk about one of Cobb Tuning's most popular products, the Access Port. On most Subaru ECUs, the access port can view nearly a hundred different parameters. Everything from AF learning to wastegate duty cycle, and many in between. In this segment, I'm going to go over the top five monitors that you should know and understand for your Subaru vehicle. We'll discuss how to properly collect a data log, view the log, and then explain what the numbers mean to you. Once you have a good grasp on these five monitors, you'll have a really good understanding of your vehicle's health and performance. So the first and most important step is to make sure you get the right data to look at. If the log is too short, you won't have anything to look at, and if the log's too long, you're going to have way too much information to sort through. So now I've got my access port plugged in and the key in the on position. First, let's go to monitor, so just click OK, and we want to reset the default log list. If you've messed around with this before, we just want to get the default monitors back on here, so just click reset log list, click OK again and now we have the default log list set. And now we're ready to take a data log. Scroll up to data log, click OK. You'll see an info screen, OK again. And now you'll have a list of live monitors. You can select any of these and you'll still get your full data log list. Right now it says not logging and you're viewing live data. If you click OK, it'll initialize and say logging and you're sit logging. Click OK again, it'll stop the log and automatically save it to your access port. Now that we've got it all set up, let's go for a drive. For five-speed cars, you're gonna be in third gear, and for six-speed cars, you're gonna be in fourth gear. You're gonna go from about 2,500 RPM to redline at full throttle. This is gonna give the car the best boosting characteristics to take a look at good data. So now we're gonna start the log, And then go. Then just pull over to a safe spot to stop your log, and then we'll go take a look at the data. So the first step is to make sure you have Access Port Manager open on your computer. Then just connect the Access Port. It'll take a minute to load, but that's completely normal. Then, make sure the filter is set to all files, and you should see your data log. Drag and drop it to your desktop, and you should be able to open it with any spreadsheet program. For this video, we have an example log that has a mix of good and bad data. So here's an overview of what the log will look like. On the very top, we have the monitor names. And then below that is the data that you recorded in sequential order. The five monitors we'll be looking at are number one, AF Learning 1, a percentage correction for fueling. Number two, boost, a manifold pressure measurement. Number three, dam or dynamic advance multiplier, a learn correction that adjusts the overall timing. Number four, fine knock learning, a learn correction that makes small tweaks to timing. And number five, Feedback not correction, an instant correction to timing. AF Learning 1 is a percentage correction for fueling. So positive numbers means that fuel is being added, and negative numbers means that fuel is being taken out. The closer to zero the better, but generally you want to be in a plus or minus 8% range. You can see here that these values are within that range, but below this they have exceeded that threshold. For values like this, you could possibly have a leak in your intake track, you might have bad MAF or O2 sensors, or you could be using an intake that the mapping isn't designed for. Boost is the manifold absolute pressure minus the current barometric pressure measured in PSI on the access port. Positive numbers means the pressure has increased in the manifold, and negative numbers means that the manifold is under vacuum. The various maps have designated peak boost levels and will gently taper towards redline. 
Generally, plus or minus one PSI is an acceptable range, but if you're well under target boost, you should try using a high wastegate map. And if you're exceeding target boost, you should try using a low wastegate map. In this example, you can see that we hit peak boost pressure and that it gently tapers towards redline as the RPMs increase. The dam, or dynamic advance multiplier, adjusts the vehicle's overall timing based on its current knock situation. For the O2 to O5 WRX, this value will range from 0 to 16, and for all other turbo model Subarus, it'll range from 0 to 1. The starting point will vary depending on the model and tune, but you always want it to learn up to its maximum value. This value will reset after a map reflash, an ECU reset, or a battery disconnect. But if you see it drop under any other circumstance, like in this example, you could have a potential knock issue. Fine knock learning is a learn correction that the ECU uses to make small tweaks to timing once the dam has settled. If fine knock learning hits extreme values, the ECU will consider modifying the dam. An initial correction is minus 1.4, but is learned away in increments of 0.35. So in this example, the correction is already dropping towards zero from the initial value, so it's not something that we should be concerned about. Feedback knock correction is an instant correction the ECU applies to timing based on the knock sensor and when the changes from the learned parameters of dam and fine knock learning don't apply. An initial value is typically minus 1.4 or minus 2 depending on the ECU. And you might see this on occasion, especially at low loads. In this example, you can see that multiple and consistent corrections are being made under high load and not due to sudden shocks like throttle changes or shifts. This is something you should be concerned about. You should immediately inspect the tune or mechanical condition of your vehicle. If you still have any questions, you can always give us a call or shoot us an email at tech at cobtuning.com. Well, that's it for this episode. If you just follow these easy steps, you'll have a good understanding of your car's health and performance so you can enjoy your newfound power. Thanks again for joining us, and if you have any questions you'd like answered on camera, all you have to do is ask Cobb. If you have questions or topics you'd like answered on camera, then email them to askcobb at cobtuning.com. <laughs>